Hello, everyone. This is Donia Zhang. Today, I'm going to present Courtyard Housing Around the World, a Cross-Cultural Analysis and Contemporary Relevance. Set within the universe, humans need a shelter for peaceful existence, a space where one can observe the interchanges of the sun and the moon, day and the night, wind and the rain and the seasons. This space is the courtyard. A courtyard is a special place that opens to the sky and often to the earth, surrounded by rooms, trees, plants, and flowers. It provides residents with daily contact with nature and is usually the liveliest place in the house. The courtyard is environmentally friendly and energy efficient. Its form permits light, air, and views, as well as defense, security, family privacy, and the control of noise and dust. Previous research findings suggest that if a courtyard is provided with a pool, fountain, trees, plants, and flowers, it can raise the relative air humidity and act as a temperature moderator, reducing heat in summer and warming up air in winter. Moreover, square-shaped courtyards have better thermal performance as a passive cooling strategy than rectangular-shaped courtyards. Furthermore, a courtyard can regulate indoor light with high levels of exterior illuminances, relatively reduced in summer and increased in winter through reflection on the vertical surfaces. The courtyard house also promotes cultural vitality. Its design and plantations were often based on the concept of a heaven or paradise in world histories and philosophies. In his book, House Form and Culture, Amos Rutherford eloquently argued that house form is not simply the result of physical forces or any single casual factor. It is the consequence of a whole range of socio-cultural factors seen in their broadest terms. All over the world, the courtyard has functioned as a place for cultural activities and festivities when weather permitted. The courtyard house is one of the oldest types of human habitat, spanning at least 5,000 years and occurring in distinct forms in many parts of the world across climates and cultures. My literature research shows that nearly 40 countries in the world have identified with a having traditional courtyard houses, which are marked on this map. The different sizes of the red squares indicate the extent of the spread of a courtyard house in that country or region. The aims of the study are threefold. First, to explore traditional courtyard houses in six cultures, Chinese, Indian, Islamic, Greco-Roman, Spanish, and Hispanic American, with regards to their cosmic axis and architectural symbolism, favorable orientation of buildings, socio-spatial organization, and cultural activities. Secondly, to trace contemporary new courtyard housing around the world. Finally, to suggest a new courtyard garden housing system that may be applied globally. Throughout history, Chinese builders have favored a number of conventional architectural plans and structural principles, among which are axiality, bilateral symmetry, hierarchy, and enclosure as emphasized in feng shui theory. Courtyards or light wells were important features in the layout of a fully built Chinese house. Philosophically, the courtyards acted as links between heaven and earth because during the Han Dynasty, Chinese people regarded heaven and earth as a microcosmo and the human body as a microcosmo to reflect the universe. Offering sacrifices to heaven and earth in the courtyards was considered crucial to bringing good fortune. China situates in the northern hemisphere of the globe, in the east of the Eurasian continent. Sunlight comes from the south all year round. Feng Shui theory advocates the houses should sit north and face south, not only for receiving more sunlight, but also for avoiding chilly winds. 
the correct building orientation was essential for Chinese people also because they worshipped the sun and moon gods. The drawing on the left shows house types across China with the courtyard as a common feature. The drawing on the right is the eight trigrams method for courtyard layout to achieve the unity of heaven and humans, indicating Chinese cosmological thinking when arranging the rooms around the courtyard to promote health and well-being for the occupants. A traditional Chinese courtyard house will normally host an extended family of three or four generations. Social hierarchy was clearly expressed in the spatial arrangement of some extensive courtyard houses. After entering a typical Beijing Sikhayuan, one would immediately enter the inverted south hall that was sitting south and facing north, which was normally used by male servants and the gatekeepers. The central halls serving as the living quarters for the oldest generation and the guests was placed along the north-south central axis facing south and it was the highest and most, most exquisitely decorated. When there was no guest, the central halls was used as a study or places for ancestral worship, conducting daily activities, holding life cycle events, having seasonal festivities, and so on. The central halls symbolized family unity, continuity, and the power of family clan. The east and west wing halls were linked to the cardinal directions and the social hierarchy. They were the quarters for the lower family members, such as concubines and children, and were less decorated. Spaces for wives and unmarried female family members were placed deeper in the northern halls. So the best buildings in the Beijing Sikhayuan were the central halls facing south, each with two year rooms flanking on either side. The second best was the west wing halls facing east, and the least ideal was the south hall facing north and the east wing hall facing west. Apart from cultural implications, the room rankings also relate to thermal comfort in the climate of northern China. Family life was peacefully played out in a finely tuned classical Chinese courtyard house. Traditionally, the courtyard was a space for domestic activities. Cooking was normally conducted in courtyards in summer for reducing heat indoors. Tables and stools were placed in courtyards for study or recreation. Children would play in courtyards without adults having safety concerns. Pets, plants, and flowers were also nurtured in courtyards. In southern China, such as Suzhou, where the climate is generally warm, scholars and artists would regularly meet in courtyard gardens of private homes, where they could actively socialize, quietly contemplate, philosophize, com compose and read poetry, paint, play games, drink tea or wine, take herbs for medicine, and so on. Many of these fashionable pastimes were practiced well into the Song, Ming, and Qing dynasties. So Chinese courier gardens functioned as spiritual and material refugees and facilitated a cultured way of life. Courier house is an indigenous architectural style in India as well, whose design was guided by a square mandala as a representation of the cosmos. The diagram is divided into a square grid with a network of lines running from north, south, and east, west, each quarter designating the place of a god, with the central square left empty, symbolizing concentrated energy and the metaphor of the cave in the heart, in which soul or Atman resides. The human body, dwelling, and settlement must be correctly oriented within this cosmic square for health and well-being. The sun and seasonal wind directions, as well as cultural traditions, determine the Indian courtyard orientation. The favorable orientations for most Indian houses are east, north, or west. 
south is considered an inauspicious direction because it faces the heat of the sun and where lives the god of death, Yama, who would bring misfortune. The majority of Indian Korean houses face east towards the Ganges River because it is the direction of sunrise. North is also considered a favorable orientation because of the Himalayan mountains, that is the home of the gods. Social rank and gender segregation were observed in Indian courtyard houses. Both the front and the back of a house have an upper floor designated for the females in the household, with the windows either facing the courtyard or the upper level of the street. The balconies on the upper floor allow the inhabitants to look down into the courtyard without being seen, aided by screens and the reed curtains. If there is a second gate to the street, it is usually very small and is located in the back wall, used primarily by the females of the household. The northern urban Indian Korean house basically has three parts. The front is a roofed veranda, which is a few steps up from the street. Then there is a room used by males for gathering, entertaining friends, or sleeping in the monsoon season. The courtyard is the most important part of an Indian house, where many household activities would take place and spread out to the street. The courtyard also has chief symbolic functions. Since it is an open to sky space, wedding ceremonies were often performed in the courtyard to be witnessed by heavenly bodies as required by Hindu customs. Special rituals and ceremonies were occasionally held at the threshold. In addition, other religious rites associated with births, deaths, and festivals were also carried out in the courtyard. An Islamic courtyard evokes the Garden of Eden or the Paradise. In cosmological terms, the courtyard is not open to the sky, but roofed by the sky and the stars at night. The Arabs, have applied architectural metaphors in their cosmology so that the sky was regarded as a dome supported by four columns, giving a symbolic value to their courtyard house, which was considered as a representation of the universe. The four sides of the courtyard represent the four columns that carry the dome of the sky. The sky itself roofs the courtyard and is reflected in the habitual fountain in the center of the courtyard because water is the most vital life-giving element in nature, symbolizing the universal sum of essence and the reservoir of all the potential existence. The courtyard houses in Iran and Iraq have no functionally designated rooms for cooking or sleeping. Inhabitants move horizontally and vertically in the day and throughout the year to gain natural cooling in summer and warmth in winter for better summer comfort. The flat rooftops were often used for sleeping in hot weather. The orientation of Iranian Korean houses is largely determined by the prevailing wind and the sun path directions. Although the climatic conditions, landscape, and street and neighborhood patterns also govern the shape, proportion, and orientation of houses, in different parts of Iran. The Iraqi peasants normally built their living rooms to face south, backing it with north-facing loggia. The orientation of Egyptian Korean houses was determined partly by sun and partly by wind. The living rooms usually face north to benefit from the cool southerly breeze and to ensure there's no reflected radiation. There is no specific orientation requirement for an Arab Korean house gate, although ideally it faces west, the direction of Mecca. The Arab Korean house was a private world created especially for women to be away from the harsh reality of commerce, warfare, and so on. There is a clear privacy concern 
in the house as women and men from the same family need to be separated from each other after reaching the adult age, which leads to the divided men and women quarters. In some Islamic cultures, private courtyards provide the only outdoor space for women to relax without being seen by passersby in the street or neighbors, as one cannot have a window overlooking the neighbor's courtyard, which is often their living space. The cultural significance of an Islamic courtyard is important. The courtyard is used primarily as an extension of the living quarters and as a multi-purpose room where most family activities would take place, which strengthens the family and the community life. In ancient Mesopotamia, now Iraq, and some neighboring countries, celebrations of the seasons were important traditions which took place in courtyards. The courtyards accommodated the ceremonies and the rituals that can still be observed in many Iranian, Iraqi, and Syrian towns. The joy of celebrating under the sky, but within a house compound, suggests a sense of eternal existence and continuity. With the conquest of Alexander the Great, Greek culture in all its forms spread across the Eastern Mediterranean and beyond, bringing with it the Greek idea of Korea house. In Greek mythology, the symbolism of the courtyard is the Isles of the Blessed, or an earthly paradise. The Roman courtyard houses are typically found in the ruined city of Pompeii, dating back to the late 4th or early 3rd century BCE. Its surviving structures represent a notable transition from Greek to Roman architectural style. The central uncovered area in the Roman house is called the atrium, Nowadays, we often use the term to refer to a space covered by a glass roof. Roman atrium houses were built parallel to the street. I have not found any literature on the socio-spatial organization in Greco-Roman Korean houses, but it is worth investigation. From the excavated remains and restored drawings of the atrium and period style Korean houses in Pompeii, one may confidently assume that the Pompeians used their courtyards for daily living, cooking, dining, planting, family gathering, and so on. Spain was conquered by Arab Muslims from North Africa in about 750 and was occupied by the Arabs for over 500 years. Spaniards have integrated many Arab cultural patterns, one of which was Korean house. A typical Spanish Korean house entrance is pointing to the courtyard center. Some courtyards place the gate in a way that leads directly to an arcade along the courtyard rather than the center. In general, the orientation of Spanish courtyard houses depends on that of the street. At least one wall of the house will be nearly parallel to the street, which leads to many variations of the courtyard form. In Spain, the most common uses of courtyards are as extensions of living, dining, and cooking spaces, and everyday repetitive acts benefit from a change of the scene. Since the Spanish conquest of South America in 1492, entire new cities with courtyard houses were established in Latin Hispanic America, following the settlement patterns of Iberian models influenced by Arab Muslim culture. However, semi courtyard houses existed prior to the Colombian civilizations, such as the pre Inca city of Chan Chan in North Peru, which confirms the universality of the Korean form till the 20th century. In older Mexican cities with no grid pattern of streets, there is a huge variety of Korean house orientations. In newer graded cities, 
the streets and the courtyard houses are either oriented to the cardinal directions of north, south, and east, west, or set at 45 degree of the cardinal directions, which is typical of many Spanish colonial towns. The result of 45 orientation is an even distribution of sunlight on the south facade throughout the year. In Mexico, the most common uses of courtyards and arcades are as extensions of living, dining, and cooking spaces. The courtyard is also a children's playground of a great variety, as the typical courtyard floor offers both hard and soft surfaces. One serves toys with views, the other for digging, forming earth or sand, channeling water, and so on. In the courtyard, children learn to care for pets, feed the fish in the pond, and observe birds building nests in the vines. The courtyard offers children enough contact with nature. China renovated its traditional courtyard houses incrementally, and the Chinese-style new courtyard housing has been built since the 1990s, such as the Jiu Hutong and Nan Chizhi projects in Beijing and the Tongfang Yuan, Shilin Yuan, and the Jianan Bi Yuan estates in Suzhou. Since the 2000s, there also emerged Chinese-style courtyard garden villas in many parts of China. Denmark began its co-housing experiment in the 1960s. A successful example is the Team Garden, consisting of 90 rental housing units subdivided into six groups, each with about 15 units centered on a common courtyard and a community house. There is also a large community center located on the main street that is shared by all the groups. The chief function of the communal spaces is to provide residents with the opportunities for social interaction and daily activities from which more communal life can develop. California adapted the courtyard housing from Spanish presidents in the 1920s to 1930s. Beginning in the 1960s, new courtyard style housing was again constructed in American cities, such as the atrium houses in Madison Park and Hyde Park in Chicago, Sunnyside Gardens in New York, and the Rio Mount House, powerful supportive housing in Miami, Florida. In 1990s USA, the courtyard style of housing revived in the form of bungalow courts as part of the new urbanism movement, and most of these projects are in Mediterranean style. The picture on the left shows a new courtyard house design for a single family in Beijing, China, and the one on the right is a new courtyard house design for a single family in Jiangxi, in southern China. Influenced by Garden City movement in 1898 in the UK, courtyard housing started in Canada as early as 1910. The examples include the Bay Apartment Cooperative and the Spruce Corp Housing Cooperative in Toronto, Ontario. Since the 1980s, courtyard style housing revived in Canada, typically in the name of a cooperative housing. My 2013 survey shows that 30% cooperative housing in Toronto have identified with one or more courtyards. The Canadian co-housing network formed in 1992 is part of a global co-housing initiative. The design of these communities promotes social interactions through central courtyards and community gardens, as well as common house with shared facilities. These self-managed communities create social ties that help achieve a high quality of life, and the cars are generally kept at the edges of the community properties. Co-housing is gaining popularity in North America. In early 2020, Canadian Co-Housing Network website listed 14 completed co-housing projects across Canada, 
with four under construction, eight in development, and 12 in formation. Also, in early 2020, the Co-Housing Association of America website listed 302 co-housing communities compared with 289 by the end of 2015. It increased 13 in five years. This table summarizes this study. It's a cross-cultural analysis of traditional Korean houses around the world in six cultures, Chinese, Indian, Islamic, Greco-Roman, Spanish, Hispanic American, uh, with regards to their cosmic axis and architectural symbolism, favorable orientation of buildings, socio-spatial organization, and cultural activities. The courtyard house is a common heritage of humanity that has been built all over the world. It has a past as well as a future. In the courtyard, Nature and culture are intertwined, and the shared meaning of the Korean house is an earthly paradise from which one may construe that the meaning of the world is the Korean garden. The research also finds that across the six cultures, there is no fixed favorable orientation of building around the courtyard, and the local climate and cultural beliefs are the two major forces in orienting Korea buildings. The study further shows that Eastern, Chinese, Indian, and Islamic cultures seem to have a stronger social hierarchy and the gender separation in the room allocations in the Korea houses than that of Western, Greco-Roman, Spanish, and Hispanic cultures. But more studies should be conducted to warrant this claim. Moreover, the study indicates that the courtyard has been an essential space for performing ceremonies and rituals, seasonal celebrations, daily activities to be in touch with nature, with the family, with the community, and with themselves. The study suggests a future research on courtyard housing under different climatic conditions with regards to the optimum proportion of building height to distance and so on for best environmental performance and sociocultural activities. My previous research findings indicate that the Korean form is still a preferred housing design strategy, not only because it gains better daylight and natural cooling and consumes less energy, but also the courtyard space facilitates better social health and happiness. The model on the left is a proposed new courtyard garden housing compound based on a system of 60 by 60 square meter standard block size. The common courtyard is 26 by 26 square meter shared by eight nuclear families. And each household also enjoys a private garden at the back. Each housing unit measures six by 10 square meter, total 180 square meter, with a semi-basement and two and a half stories. The model on the right is a proposed new courtyard garden housing compound based on a system of 78 by 78 square meter, standard block size. The common courtyard is 26 by 26 square meter, shared by eight nuclear families with each household enjoying a private garden of 12 by 6 square meter at the front and the back. Each housing unit measures 10 by 12 square meter, total 240 square meter, with a semi-basement and two and a half stories. The 26 by 26 square meter courtyard size complies with the minimum 25 meter social distance for privacy concern mentioned in Gale's book, Life Between Buildings. It also meets the optimum ratio of building height to distance one to three in my previous research. These measures result in the optimum number of eight households surrounding a common courtyard. 
The model on the left is a proposed new Korea Garden housing compound accommodating eight nuclear families. It's following the same planning principles suggested by Zhang 2015 and 2018. The model on the right is a proposed new Korea Garden housing compound accommodating eight nuclear families, following the same planning principle suggested by Zhang 2015 and 2018. The four models demonstrate that regardless of the architectural style in facade design or the size of each housing unit, the Korea system can be applied universally. The goal of the proposal is for the betterment of human habitat pattern to promote environmental, social, and cultural sustainability through architecture. Thank you.